Hi, on the Woodpecker today, I'm gonna talk more about the knockdown journey I've used on the bookcase. I don't know if you saw my series on how I made this big bookcase. It's so big that I had to use three different types of knockdown joinery. Here they are. First, the simple assembly screw. Then the set of strip locks 120. And finally, the Festung's Domino XL knockdown system. I'm going to begin with the simplest. For all of you, it's probably the one you've already used, the assembly screw. On one of the pieces to assemble together, it's better to drill a hole to the size of the screw. After finding it, you just drill it. Then you also need the size of the pilot hole needed for the screw and drill it also. then it's possible to screw this together. When it's done, we have a sturdy joint between two pieces. The beauty of it is that it can be taken apart and put together again. Uh, but this is not very useful when you don't want to see the assembly screw or if you can't hide it. So now comes the strip lock system. I've used some strip locks 120, just like this. It's not too difficult to install and totally invisible. But this thing locks all pieces together. Hmm, not very useful if taking it apart is what you want. And there are simpler ways to make an assembly than this. So the locking mechanism has to go. And the chisel is the perfect tool for that. Here it is, the pair are locked together and it's as simple as this to unlock them. Those are called strip locks 120, but they are closer to 125 millimeters than 120. But the size is not that important here. To install it, you need a seven millimeter straight router bit. Since I didn't have one of my own, I bought one. That is all you need. After installing the bit in a router and putting it on a router table, we're almost ready. First thing to do is set up the depth of cut, almost 10 millimeters. But it's way simpler to use the female part of the joint to set up the depth. Then we have to make sure the cut will be in the center of the pins and we're done. Next, you can trace where the strip locks will end up. The first thing to do is mark the center of it. Then it's possible to use the female part of the set, align your line to the center line of it and mark what to remove. Then all the lines are transferred to the other piece. But all our lines are on the wrong faces of the piece. They also need to be transferred. I make sure I know exactly what to remove. Then you can do the exact same thing on the other piece. Now that it's done, I also advise you to identify the exterior and interior. Then the groove can be cut. It's not too complicated. Just cut inside the lines. <laughs> but don't stress too much because it's not a big deal if you go past them. The male part of the joint can go here. Now, without changing anything to the setup, you can cut the groove on the other piece. The only thing different is that I added a tape to see where the bit starts and finishes. Here it is, the second part of the assembly is done. 
all this will go together just like that. But this is fine if you want the pieces to meet at a corner. I'll do another one with the groove, not on the side. First thing I do is trace around the piece. This will help for the groove setup. Then with a router and a guide, it's possible to cut the groove. Okay, this seems to be a complicated setup, but it's only because it's such a small test piece. But I try to go too fast and break the bit. Yes, it's exactly what you heard. Mm, I need to buy another one, but I just have enough shank to finish the demonstration. To fix the strip locks in place, you just glue the pieces with instant gel glue. This is super simple. Just apply glue on the sides of the groove and push the female part in it, taking care to align the center line with the center of the strip locks. Oh, one more thing. This has to be level with the surrounding wood. Then you can do the exact same thing for the male part of the set. All that's left to do is to wait for the glue to dry. And this doesn't take long and our pieces are ready to be assembled. This is what a center assembly looks like. It can easily be taken apart. I can even move this to the other assembly. It's that simple. When needed, this can be taken apart. Frankly, this was the first time I've used this system and I was very impressed. But this assembly and the one with the screws are useless if you want to join two pieces like this. So it's here that I also used the Festool Domino XL Knockdown Joinery. This comes in three boxes. The first one contains some instructions the special bones and some plastic pieces to center this. The second box contains this part and finally the last one, these parts that stay inside the mortises. The way this works is that when the bolt is screwed inside, those wings spread inside the wood and it gets stuck. So a typical assembly would have this part in the style and the bolt inside the rail, just like that. But don't worry, this is all explained in the booklet, which is also written in several more languages that I don't understand. It's also full of pictures, but the most important information is in this one. It gives us the position and the depth of the mortises we have to drill. So the first thing to do is set the height to the height we need our mortises to be. Then set the depth of cut to 25 millimeters and it's a go for the first mortise. Now we just need to move the stop depth to 50 millimeters and cut the other mortise. If this were a normal assembly, a floating tenon would go there and this would go just like that. But since we want to be able to take it apart, we need to add this piece. Here, there's a choice to make. Which side to cut the hole? I've decided to cut it inside. To avoid making any mistakes, I draw a mark. According to the instructions, we need to set the height to 40 millimeters and the depth 10 millimeters deeper than the center of the mortise. With these measurements, I'll try 25 millimeters. 30 mm, would be too much. Now that all the holes are done, it's possible to put this piece in place and sit it on the bottom. On the style, I have to pound this part inside the mortise. This also needs to be flush with the wood. Then it's possible to screw the bolt. The first time, it's much harder to screw because the wings have to bite into the wood. 
we can use a 10 mm wrench or an allen key inside the hole like I'm doing. When I'm at the end, I just unscrew a bit so the big hole is facing the right way. Just like that. <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words. And with the bolt facing the right way, the only thing missing is the plastic thing that simulates a domino. Now it's possible to assemble this. See, it's not that difficult. Here we can see the joint closing. When this needs to be taken apart, it's very easy. If this needs to be moved elsewhere, the bolt can be removed. We can also do other types of assembly. Like this one I've used to hold the side of the bookcase. I had to change some measurements, but assembling those three pieces together is a charm. You need someone <laughs> way stronger than me to take this apart. With knockdown joinery like this one, it's possible to assemble and disassemble them hundreds of times. It's not more difficult than this. I hope my demonstration of these three types of knockdown joinery I've used on the bookcase was not too boring. But maybe at least you now have some idea on which type of knockdown joinery to use on your future bookcase. Have fun knocking down your furniture and see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.